Hey guys, even here, and let's do a quick little update of all the physiques of all the major bodybuilding names in the industry. Of course, not only bodybuilders, but classic physique competitors, they are bodybuilders as well. And first, let's begin with this photo right here of Brandon Curry, magnificent photo. Um, his biceps, his whole arms are looking just very, very good. And this made me call this video, actually put it in a thumbnail. A lot of good biceps, and you're gonna see a bunch of other very good biceps, not only in bodybuilding, but first of all, I mean, this physique looks really, really good. Brandon is on point, he's getting leaner, if this is the recent photo, but I'm sure it is. He's getting good, just good. He's getting very, very good. I mean, yeah, his legs, not perfect, but look at the rest of the body, look at the flow of his entire physique. Very good, Mr. Olympia Verti, most likely 2019 Mr. Olympia winner. What about this guy though, Steve Kuklo, Indie Pro winner? Can he crack top 6 this year? Last year he was top 10, and now with a depleted lineup and with a couple of improvements that Steve made this year, I think he just may. I think he will be one of the favorites to crack the top 6, depending on how uh, conditioned these other guys are. I think he has very good chances, why not? What does he lack? Pretty much nothing, right? It's all about conditioning at this point. But I don't think you can really say the same thing about the classic physique Mr. Olympia finals, because it's gonna be between Brion and Chris, I'm pretty sure about that. And it's not gonna be who is more conditioned. I think both of these guys are gonna be very well conditioned, and it's gonna be either uh, Brion's completeness or Chris's freakiness. And whatever you guys prefer, I mean, I understand all of you making a strong argument about uh, Brion winning it again, because look at his back, look at his back double bicep, very complete, he doesn't lack pretty much anything. The same thing goes with his front double bicep, what is he lacking? Maybe a little bit of uh, lat mass, you know, the width, the width taper. I mean, it's not bad, but Chris's width taper is better. I think both of these guys are gonna bring very good conditioning. They are also both gonna bring great development. Brian is apparently bringing great completeness. But Chris, though, Chris is bringing some freakiness. And freakiness in a classic way. The way that Arnold Schwarzenegger was freaky. He was freaky, but he was classic. He was aesthetic. The same thing is with Chris. His chest is very dominant and very developed. But it's not overdeveloped to the point that you can say that it is too dominant compared to the other body parts. No, it's just very proportional and it looks amazing. He has very wide shoulders and wide chest. And that's one of the most impressive things about Chris. He also has an amazing wheat taper, very good vacuum and overall very good, beautiful, classic aesthetic lines. So it's gonna be between these two guys, I believe, and I think, I think Chris will edge him out just because of his, you know, freakiness, the shape of his muscle, the structure, also the height that's gonna make him look, that's gonna make him stand out more in the lineup, and so on, but we'll see what happens when the time comes. What about this guy, though? Well, he can surprise us all. He's kind of a dark horse. He never competed at the Mr. Olympia before, and he won the New York Pro, and look at those guns. Jesus, look at the biceps, look at the size of those arms. Very, very arm dominant, very bicep dominant. Just like Brandon Curry. Also, Brion Ainsley has very good biceps, but <sighs> this guy, this guy is another level. These biceps are world class, and I'm sure this guy will transfer to 212 in a matter of a year or two or something like that. We'll see, we'll see but uh, he has the potential for bodybuilding. I don't think he should stick with uh, classic because he grows so fast. And look at him here, very classic. The waist is almost non-existent. The V taper is amazing and those biceps are making him look very aesthetic and very classic and very freaky. So I'm sure this guy will do great at the Mr. Olympia. Steve Lorias actually beat Kian at the Arnold Classic, but Kian made uh, huge improvements later at the New York Pro. Although uh, we are not going to see Steve at the Mr. Olympia, he's making improvements for next year. He wants to improve on his physique, which is a smart decision. He cannot win it this year, he cannot win the Mr. Olympia, but next year or in a couple of years, maybe so. He definitely does need to progress to make a couple of changes, a couple of improvements, and he's going to be great. He's one of my favorite classic physique guys, with that small waist and dominant arms and a great X taper. You know, his legs are also very, very good. 
He really does have a huge potential and uh, his physique is definitely very classic. We'll see what happens with him next year or in a couple of years. But as far as 212, Zane Watson, his uh, new physique update, I mean, he's prepping for the Mr. Olympia. The thing about this guy is, I don't really find him that impressive anymore. He's not as big as the other 212 guys. But when I saw him, I think it was 2016 or 17 Iron Classic for the first time. I didn't know about him at that time. His posing actually made me emotional, but I'm not a really emotional person very much by nature. But that posing really, that was the first time for me to actually get emotional about watching a bodybuilder pose because it was really, really good. And I'm gonna play that video in another video, maybe, if you guys wanna watch. I'm not really sure right now. I think it was 2016 or 2017 Arnold Classic and uh, his posing was very, very good very very artistic and uh, he was very well conditioned and he really presented his physique in the best possible light he caught my eye and i've been following him since then and it's a very very classic 212 physique but not so much about uh, juan morel <laughs> not very classic right his guest posing right here was really good because he was very well conditioned for a guest poser i'm sure he did like a mini mini cut or just a dehydration protocol or something like that because he's always lean he has insanely fast metabolism and he trains very very hard and very often also he trains like twice a day so i mean if you have this much muscle and if you train twice a day you really need to eat a lot to get fat so he doesn't get fat that easily and this guy is also another contender for that top six at the mr olympia and let's finish this video with nathan the ashes uh, posing practice video he looks dry he looks dry, very dry, but the problem with his physique is definitely not conditioning. He is very well conditioned. It's the back thickness, the hamstring thickness, the overall size. He needs to get a little bit bigger and uh, also his stomach is kind of too long. It hurts him a little, so his structure as well. So this guy will probably never win Mr. Olympia. I thought he has the potential, but probably not. Although he definitely does look great at this point and he is very lean. And I want to leave you guys with this photo of Keon Pearson, his amazing biceps. And that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed it, guys, like it. If you want to see more videos like this, I'm going to be posting them every single day. I never skip an upload day. You know that if you are a subscriber of this channel. So make sure to subscribe and to like this video. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.